Hi there, Chris here with another fresh tip for you all. In this video, we are gonna take a look at brushes and brush care. And this is kind of the part two to the previous video where we were talking about brushes. We are gonna continue our look. And of course, you can see here, I have a selection of some of my uh, brushes. You can see these four right here are some brushes that you may or may not notice uh, in a lot of the videos that I produce. Uh, and of course, you can see how like a lot of them are quite dirty and you know, just, just well used. But I do keep, try and take care of the uh, bristles on them. And of course you can see these three on the end here, one's a synthetic, uh, but these two here are older Citadel brushes and you can see they're actually quite beaten up. Uh, in fact, I think this one here I use for pigments and things of that, so, but that's another video. <laughs> so taking care of brushes, well, one of the first things you wanna take care of when uh, dealing with brushes is even before we are going to use any kind of other products to take care of the brush. And in fact, a big way of taking care of your brushes is how you use them. What does he mean by that? Well, here, let's go for an example. So for our example here, we are gonna use this uh, medium shade brush from Citadel. Now, oftentimes I use this brush as kind of a work brush. What do I mean by that? I often will use this to gather my paint to load onto my palette. I don't ever use the good, uh, you know, brushes. Like for example, I use this Artist Opus number one a lot. And um, this is oftentimes what I'm using for, you know, doing my edge highlighting and eyeballs and things of that nature. I never use this to gather paint other than from my palette and I'm drawing it along and just loading the brush up. And really that's what we're talking about here is, is loading the brush. Just a quick demonstration of how I often load a brush. I will use the Citadel paint pot. Now, if we're using dropper bottles like Vallejo and MIG Ammo and, you know, Scale 75 and all these other great companies with paint pots, I simply always make sure that I've shaken the paint pot vigorously. And then of course, whenever I'm drawing the paint, I never draw, well, I shouldn't say never, never, but I always try and not reach into the paint pot like this. Reason being is because like, I always try and grab, gather the paint from the lip. The reason being is that you may misjudge how far down the paint is. So for example, if I went down and gathered a load of paint, look how far I've gone. Oops, now what ends up happening? Well, the paint is going to begin to gather. If you keep doing that, the paint is going to gather in the bristles where it meets the furl, the metal part that holds the bristles in place. The paint is going to gather there and eventually under enough time, the paint will dry and of course begin to splay the hairs. Oh, I hit my finger. And that's what you don't want. So oftentimes I always recommend is drawing from the lip of the bottle. And when I'm gathering paint, I'm always try to be very consistent. And whenever you hear me in the videos and I'm saying a mix ratio of like say one to one, well, I often, this is how much paint I will often gather on my brush to load onto the palette. When this is my work surface here is my palette for this example, but and for most times I'm painting anyway. You'll notice that I only draw the paint halfway up the bristles. And you can see I've got like about a pea size um, gather of paint here. And when I apply it to the, my palette, I will often just do that. And I will turn the brush as I'm doing so to draw out most of the paint onto my palette surface. Then of course this brush, you can see here how very little paint has gathered into the furl. And really quickly, I just give it a quick rinse and the brush is good to go. And of course we're not loaded up with paint or anything like that. That's really one of the big ways of preventing damage to your bristles is the fact and how you draw. And of course, when we're working with our brush as well, oftentimes uh, using a good fine brush for a particular type of techniques, you don't ever want to use your, you know, your good pointy brushes to do dry brushing or anything like that. You just don't want to do it. Use a, an older brush, an old beater, as it were, you know, to do your fine dry brushing. And I have many old brushes like this that are just beaten right down to the nub. And when you're drawing your paint on your palette, you just wanna draw always halfway up the bristles. You don't ever really wanna go further than that. Even when you're using like a shade wash, I realize that, you know, oftentimes you'll see the, sh the shade wash way up into the furl. And sometimes it, even with like the contrast paints and shade washes, the brush will draw that paint all the way up. And you, as long as you're fairly quick about it and rinse the brush off, you'll be fine and you'll prevent a lot of unnecessary wear and tear on your bristles. And that is the, really the big one when working with your with your paintbrushes and taking care of your paintbrushes, also how you work with them. That is really one of the big 
aspects of taking care of your brush is how you use it. That is just one one way and that's really one of the common ways that I see a lot of people you know messing up their brushes. Of course too when you buy a brush uh, and it's got the little plastic cap, keep those plastic caps because when you're done with a painting session you you can always preserve your, your hairs and protect them and you know if you're traveling and what have you it's just a good a good habit to be in. So let's say for example paint has gathered. Now there is a, a fair amount of actual paint gathered up here. I don't know if it I can if it shows up on camera well enough there is a good deal of paint gathered up in here so for example for anybody out there who's okay well i got paint gathering there and the, when the brush does dry the hairs start to go everywhere how do i uh how do i keep my brushes to a nice point there's a few ways we can go about that one is a product like brush restorer and this is from Vallejo and essentially this is like an alcohol product and basically with this product I often like to use uh, some clamping tweezers and I will grab the brush you just use this right in the bottle you can uh, pour a little bit into a container if you want but I often will just use the, bo uh, the bottle open like this and I will clamp off the brush somewhere where it gets a good grip on the brush I try and do it somewhere close to the axis and then of course I will drop the brush into the solution and I will look to where it is and I don't want to go too far down uh, about halfway up that furrow the metal furrow inside the brush and from there I will leave the brush for hours and let that solution do its job uh, that's often one if you have something else that you know will hold the solution um, your brush in position while you're doing this all the better but I often just use these tweezers. Now, personally, I do not use this product very often. It's only when I'm restoring a brush or, you know, I just really am concerned about getting that gunk out of the bristles. I will use this product. And then of course, once it's done and you've let it sit for a while, you can come in and massage basically those, um, like you rinse this a couple times and you'll see like little chunks of the paint come out. Essentially, this product is a dilute uh, alcohol solution, essentially. Do I recommend using alcohol to clean your, your sable haired brushes. I do not. Reason being is alcohol will dry out the hairs. You treat these hairs like you would, you know, your own hair on your head, right? All those kind of solvents, mineral spirits, um, you know, oh man, all sorts of product, all sorts of things out there that are, you know, used for cleaning are not very good for cleaning brushes, especially natural hairs. Oftentimes, you know, it's just, it's just going to dry the hair out, make the hair brittle, and then the hairs are just going to fall apart and break on you. So don't do it. And this kind of solution here, uh, it's only intended for this purpose, for just breaking up that paint inside there, giving this brush a quick rinse, and then, you know, maybe do it again or switch to another method. Now, in this example, I've only left the brush I got red paint on me. I've only left the brush for a few moments there, but if we move our finger along, we can probably pull off some of the paint here. Being not too rough, just a little bit of pressure. Yeah, you can see some of it coming off right now. The solution, it was only sat in there for a for a minute, and yeah, you can see some of the paint is coming off there. There's a good, decent amount of paint building up on that spot there, but otherwise, uh, that is brush restorer. Of course, the very common way I clean my brushes is with Masters brush soap or brush cleaner and preserver. The preserver part is basically this, this is a conditioner for your bristles. Now this is applicable to bristle brushes, uh, sable brushes and synthetic brushes. So you can clean both brushes. And in fact, I highly recommend you get in the good habit of cleaning your brushes. Like Chris always says, take care of your brushes. This particular product is a solid uh, soap essentially. And see there it's well used uh, use it all the time don't worry if it gets scummy like this and everything like that it's perfectly natural it's soap and it also has a nice smell now with this particular product and there are many different uh, brush soaps out there and they all do you know the job as well it's just it's just a soap it's just a, a gentle mild soap but I really uh, like this particular brand because this has worked well for me uh, for my work in oil paints this cleans oil paint and to do this basically all you do is just gather a bit of water onto your bristles after you're done your painting session and when you're done your painting session I often rec uh, recommend you go through this process to clean your brushes when you're done and you're gonna you know you only maybe sit down once a week to do any kind of painting this is uh, really uh, the time that you're gonna you know clean your brush I also recommend between dry brushings uh, to clean the dry brush brush uh, from uh, any residual paint in the bristles because sometimes you can get color transference but I think I've demonstrated that one before but anyway I gather some water you can see there's a very very healthy amount in the brush you can see it's already tinted red 
from the previous uh, paint that we were playing with. And I just gently move the brush in the soap, gather a nice little lather into the bristles, and then in my hand, right here, we'll use my, the palm of my hand. Now this is, this is non-toxic, so it's not gonna hurt you. And I move the brush in the palm of my hand. And as you may notice, I'm not pushing all the way down. That is gonna end up bending the bristles. You only wanna go about halfway up the bristles. So you only wanna get this slight sweeping motion. You go back and forth, left and right, up and down, maybe even semicircles, clockwise, counterclockwise, right? And you just work the soap into the brush. Again, we're not applying a lot of pressure. If you can feel that hard furl, that metal furl in your hand, you are doing this too hard and you're gonna end up uh, over time ruining the bristles on your brush. And you know, your brush is not gonna last that long and you probably spent a large amount of money on your brush and you know, you're just gonna say, well, why did this brush not last long? I took care of it. Maybe because you were being a little bit rough on it. Again, these are like, you know, these are natural hairs. Now the synthetic brushes, yeah, you can be a little bit rougher, but again, same kind of thing. Uh, using solvents and stuff like that, it's not as likely to dry the bristles out, but I don't do a lot of painting with those types of paints that require, you know, alcohol and things like that. And, you know, whenever I do, I usually use synthetic brushes, but yeah. And again, you just do it for a few minutes, not long. And then of course you can wipe the excess uh, soap off the brush and then give it a quick rinse bang now you may or may not be able to see this on camera but the brush actually looks brown again the bristles look brown kind of like the rest of the sable hairs on brushes it's actually getting closer back to to the brown that they typically are and you can do this more than once that's all you know and that's it's all it requires if you're done for the done for the week kind of thing you're done your painting session well, here's what I, another one that I highly, highly recommend. And with this, you just grab a little bit of the water. See here's eh, a little too much there, but just dampen the brush with the water. You grab your soap and you run the brush a couple times through the soap. Just get a little bit of the soap onto the bristles and then gently kind of massage the bristles forward, not applying a lot of pressure in your fingers and turn the brush as you're doing so, you're basically kind of making like a little V in your fingers and you're running your brush through it. Kind of like, almost like a, like anybody who use like a knife sharpener. You're doing that kind of motion where you're just drawing the bristles and you're making them to a nice point. The residual soap in your fingers acts as a conditioner. So all you have to do is just run your the brush through your fingers, turning it as you do so, being gentle. You don't have to apply a lot of pressure and just gently work the brush back into a point and then, then what we do typically is we leave it on its side, leave it for like an hour or so till you know it dries. Reason for that is if you leave it on its end, you know, like in a cup or whatever, the wa the residual moisture and water can run down into the furrow, and depending on how, what how the brush is made, that moisture can rot the glue or whatever is binding those hairs together, and that can be a problem. Now, mind you, leaving on its side, it can do that as well. I don't recommend obviously storing your brush uh, point down because obviously you're just gonna end up bending your bristles, anything like that, right? You always store your brushes point up. Uh, when you're allowing it to dry, just let, let it dry. And then of course you oftentimes, if it's this, these are your good brushes with the points on them, you just uh, slap the cap, protective cap back on it. And uh, you know, you set it aside and you know, it's ready to go for the next time you need to uh, use it. And that's really it. That is um, just kind of a look at brush care. Uh, again, it is not simply just using soaps and you know, uh, brush restorers to keep your brushes healthy. It is also how we use the brush that determines how much life we're gonna get out of each of our little brushes, especially some of these brushes that cost us a pretty little penny to do our little miniatures with. And again, it's all about, you know, maintaining consistency and, you know, being conscious of our efforts and our products and our tools will last a long time and will be there when we need them. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. If there's any other questions you guys have, leave comments down below uh, as far as uh, how you like to take care of your brushes or you know any other tips that maybe something you wanna provide or uh, add on to this. But a huge, huge thank you to you all for watching. A big thank you to all my patrons. Without their support, these videos would not be possible. Considering Patreon support, click the link in the description below and be taken off to a magical website called Patreon where there are varying tiers of support and a huge, Huge thank you to everybody who does take care of those brushes and they will take care of you.